This is Cruise Roy with the H1 Heli, um, the 1.9.1 software. Now, I know Chris did a good video on how it reacts. I just don't know if anybody did one. They could actually see the whole screen. Sometimes it's hard to film the whole thing. But maybe I can show you a few things. Let me plug in an H1 light. I won't have anything to show you on a controller because the H1 light is a spare I'm plugging into. Let's see if it connects. All right, so there are things you can change. We can't see a controller here. I might put a um, receive it to this in the future. But this is where you would take care of your elevator tail collective and all your switches to make sure everything's okay. If you notice, no RX signal. I can move throttle control, which is normally at default at 75%, and then tail gains at 69% here. And you can take care of that tail gain. But I would only move a couple of points at a time with both of these. Just a little bit at a time, play with them. Um, then you got the main rotor. This is where I had to go in and re-zero in the swash trim. Re-zero in every single servo. And then your high limit, low limit, and middle. So this is actually a stick position. So you have middle stick, high stick, low stick. And that's where you would take care of that in the main rotor area. Parameters. Um, I'm still looking for that. I mean, you can restore this. It doesn't matter. So I just restored it. But what it did is it went into sport mode. And it changed everything into sport mode. If you're a newbie or you don't know much about flying helicopters, but you do planes, I would say start in the soft mode. Start in the soft mode and you know start there you can always move this stuff slowly like you have the swash game that's how the swash moves the exponential the expo that's how far it moves and then your roll rate your agility how fast or precise this thing moves tail rope uh, tail rate the same way fast or slow collective compensation this, I think, is in the braking. I'm not sure about this one, but someone can chime in. Um, like, if you're going forward really fast and you let off, it's going to 10%. It's going to pull back automatically while you're in uh, GPS mode. Um, this is your GPS attitude mode, self-stabilization. Again, even though you set this to soft mode, you can change these settings to whatever you want. And it's going to, you know, it's going to write, automatically write to your controller that I'm plugged into right now, which is an H1 Lite. Um, so you try flying for a little bit, maybe a whole battery if you want. Braking force, you know, you can go all the way up to here and that bird's going to stop really fast. You don't want that. You want a soft flight. But you can play with anything you want. La, 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 la. You know, and then one day you're going to say, man, this thing's going nuts. Just hit restore. And it brings it back to sport mode. If you're ne new, I wouldn't recommend sport mode. If you want anything, go into standard flight. So you can change it to standard flight. And you can still move things. You can tweak everything in here, which is good. Now we go to the sensor. And this is where... It's very important, especially if you've been playing around with your servos, changing motors, taking the thing apart, putting it back together, disconnecting wires. You probably should. See, I set mine, you know, set your um, calibration again. And what, what Chris was talking about, you lose a function here with the light. You do have the automatic restart if it doesn't come out right. And over here, 
yeah, HDOP, this is minus or plus, and this would be your how many satellites you got. Uh, the voltage of the battery is not detected, but you can have, I always leave mine on, and it's at 360 is kind of the lowest you can go. You can go higher, but you can't go any lower than 360. That's about as low as you can go. Or you can just shut the whole thing right off. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, it, it's it's harder to do the calibration, but on the smaller birds, it's okay. So you don't need that setting. So I'm going to do it right now, see what happens. I'm going to hit that. Please start spinning. I'm just spinning the whole flight controller and GPS in my hand over and under. Upside down. And voila. And it'll tell you to disconnect. So we'll do that now. And hit OK on the screen. And plug the flight controller back in. And of course, when you do that, it reboots and you have to reconnect. And it should say calibration is OK right in here. Ooh, I bought this used. This light's got 87 minutes on it. So it's not saying that it's OK here. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to I'm going to do it again. I don't know why it's not doing it. Let me cancel it. Okay. That was probably going a little bit too fast. I don't think I completely finished it last time. There we go. Please, I just got it. I, I don't think I got it completely finished last time. Let me disconnect the controller. And now let me plug it back in. Connect. Okay, now it says successfully calibrated, successfully calibrated. So I'll let it connect again. All right, so everything's successful. It's not going to show anything here because I'm not outside. And for the last thing I wanted to show you, see this little thing? kind of looks like a Harley motor. I don't know what it stands for. But that's why I'm seeing people with different colors. You can change this thing out. Blue, green, light green kind of an aqua, orange, darker brown, purple, uh, fuchsia. I think I'm going to go with the green. I kind of like that green there. Yeah. All right. So I just quickly went through everything. Maybe I'll do a nicer job with the radio and everything. But this is Cruz Roy. Hope this helps someone out, and I'm out of here.